Hi, I'm Richie Zellan, and in this video, I begin a lesson series in which I deconstruct the style of an influential jazz guitarist by analyzing and teaching you various phrases by the chosen artist. In today's lesson, we are deconstructing Grand Green, one of the most recorded jazz guitarists of the 60s. Coming up next. Welcome back to the Jazz Guitar Channel, and if this is your first time and you're serious about learning everything you can about the art of playing jazz guitar, please subscribe and be sure to click on the bell icon so you won't miss anything. The transcribed phrases I am going to teach you next are all included in my ebook, 20th Century Jazz Guitar which you can download for free from my site, jazzguitar.richiezellen.com. They feature both the regular notation as well as the tablature you will see on the screen here. And I have placed a direct link in the info section down below this video. One, two, three, four. Now, in the interest of making the duration of this lesson as short as possible, I'm not going to go into details about Grant Green's background and his career and his gear and all that stuff. You will find all of that info plus a selected discography of Grant Green on page 68 of the book. So with that in mind, let's proceed to learn the first of five phrases I am going to show you. After teaching you all five, be sure to stick with me because I will give you examples of how I might incorporate them when soloing within a well-known standard. Here we go. And we're ready to start with phrase number one, which you will find on page 69. And this was transcribed off of the uh, complete recordings with Sonny Clark. And uh, we will notice that uh, Grant Green you know, employs a, a very simple melodic technique. He, he's not as busy with chromatic approaches and all that stuff as other uh, guitarists of his generation. He's a lot simpler in, in respect to the melody, but he's very sophisticated when it comes to rhythm. A lot of syncopation, a lot of swing. Okay, let me play this and I'll tell you what's going on here. One, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, uh, let me play this real slow and tell you what's going on. He starts here on this uh, C which is the fifth of the uh, F chord. And then he jumps up to the nine and he plays this uh, G here, which is the ninth of the uh, F minor chord. And then he goes up to this E flat, which is the flatted seventh of the minor seventh chord. Very basic, like I said, he's just playing uh, three chord tones there, no chromatic approaches or anything. And then he goes to a B flat seven, the five chord, and he goes down to the, uh, the nine, which is a C. Immediately after, do the flat seven. We have a rest, and then he goes to the uh, 13th. This G is the uh, 13th. 
And and so the measure playing the root. Again, the whole measure just consists of chord tones. And now he goes to the uh, third on the E flat major. Repeats that third. And then we have something interesting here. This is the only thing that's kind of out. He implies the dominant of that E flat uh, major seven. He implies a B flat flat nine and he plays a D flat which uh, is actually the sharp nine of a B flat seven and immediately after that he plays a uh, B natural which would be the flatted nine so and then he starts thinking over the E flat major seven and he just simply plays the root and he ends it with a little accent over the uh, fifth. Okay, we're ready to move on to uh, phrase number two by Grant Green and you will find this on page 70 of the ebook. And this one starts out with a pickup. It's in the key of C minor seven it's also transcribed from the uh, same uh, uh, complete recordings with Sonny Clark, and it's also off the same piece, Green Dolphin Street. But this is, like I said, it's a minor, minor two five, consisting of two measures. One, two, three. Very simple. And to analyze what's going on here, the pickup over uh, the C minor seven consists of the uh, flat seven, flatted six. This is obviously the uh, C minor uh, natural minor, the Aeolian mode. Flat seven, flat six, five, four. And then he goes to the D minor, seven flat five and plays Root, flat seven, six, one, and then over the uh, G7, flat nine, flat seven, sharp nine, flat nine, one, the root, flat seven, and flat three and one over the C minor seven. And we're ready to move on to uh, phrase number three by Grant Green. And this one is located on page 71. And this was transcribed from the recording Born to be Blue by Grant Green. And it's off the tune If I Should Lose You. And here we have another characteristic of the uh, Grant Green style, the use of uh, minor pentatonics very bluesy uh, approach here. And what he's doing is he's playing over a two measure minor two five cadence, uh, two five one in minor. And instead of actually thinking over the changes that are written, he's just playing over one uh, minor pentatonic over the uh, one chord, over the B flat minor chord. So, uh, Basically, he's thinking over, although what we have going on there is So let me play this for you. One, two, three, four. Okay, so basically, like I said, He's, he's starting over the uh, fifth of the B flat minor seven, playing the root on the first string here, playing the fourth of the pentatonic, flat five, which is that blue note, going back to four, flat three, one, flat seven, and one. 
are ready to move on to Grand Green phrase number four, which is on the same page, page 71, also from the same recording, Born to be Blue, and from the same standard, If I Should Lose You. This time we have a 2-5-1 in major. This is over uh, A flat minor, 7, D flat 7, to seven but we're gonna play this up here uh, where he probably played it judging from the register one two three four now you see what I mean by Grant Green having a very simple melodic approach but with lots of swing I mean, again, it's just very, very basic. He starts over the uh, A flat minor seven, plays a little arpeggio here, five, flat seven, nine. Then he goes to the uh, D flat seven, the five chord. Then again, five, three, passing tone four to five. And then he lands on the one chord on the seven, uh, playing the seventh, the fifth, and ends on the thirteen. Really accents that thirteen. So very simple, melodic approach, but very effective. So we're ready to move on to the uh, final phrase, Grant Green, phrase number five, and. You will find this on page 72. One, two, three, four, one, two. I like those accents that he uses. <laughs> Very effective. So here he's starting on the uh, third beat of the first measure. This is a uh, four measure two, five, one. And he's starting with the 11th of the uh, D minor seven flat five. Then he's going to the flat five, back to the 11th. And then he's flat seven, flat six, Five. That's in relationship to the G. Again, flat seven, flat six, five, four, three. Plays a nine and goes to the C major seven. Plays the fifth and ends accenting that root. So Interesting that over that uh, G7, over the five chord, he's uh, implying the uh, fifth mode of the melodic minor scale, and that's the uh, Mixolydian flat six. He's not using the typical uh, uh, super locrian that a lot of uh, players uh, use over the uh, G7 altered or flat nine. He's playing the uh, Mixolydian flat six. And that's why he can play a, a, uh, a ninth here. Because the natural nine is, uh, is diatonic to the uh, Mixolydian flat six. So the uh, run here from the flatted seven. Flat seven. The flatted six is acting as a passing note to the five. So it's not a it's not an extension in this scale. And there we have them, all five phrases. Before I demonstrate how I might fit these phrases when soloing over a standard, I need to make a disclaimer. I am not a fan of learning phrases or what many call licks and then trying to force them into a solo. 
Phrases, I believe, should be transcribed in order to analyze how the player is thinking over a given harmonic passage. And we do this in order to get ideas of how we might construct a line when we find ourselves within a similar harmonic context. Now, keep in mind that this requires an understanding of chord scale theory so we can analyze and translate all the transcribed notes to transposable numerical or intervallic patterns. And this is the exact procedure I have had to employ in order to be able to apply these phrases in any key using any fingering. Full disclosure now. I want you to know that when I play the following examples, I am improvising over the chosen standard, but I have the phrases written out intervallically over the measures where I will play them. I do not have them memorized. The bottom line is that this is a way of practicing with the goal that after a period of time, it will bring to mind ideas loosely based on these phrases when improvising over the same standard. Therefore, when that time comes, this, this does not mean that I will play them with the same identical notes or rhythms, but instead use them as a starting point to create new ideas in the moment. Okay, I'm going to uh, give you a few examples of how I would use some of these phrases within some well-known standards. And uh, for three of them, number three, number two, and number four, I'm going to use the uh, first A section of Alone Together. One, two, three, four. <laughs> And for the remaining phrases, I'm going to use the uh, first eight measures to Cole Porter's I Love You. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I'm sure many of you can physically play these phrases, but the question is, do you have the necessary understanding to extract from them a vocabulary that you will recall naturally in the context of an improvisation? If not, I want to encourage you to check out the Bebop Guitar Improv series. It consists of two online one-year courses where I show you all the detailed steps and exercises to stop relying on licks and learn how to become a true jazz improviser in the same way you can fluently speak your native language. And you will find a link to the site in the info section down below. Well, I'd love to hear your comments and welcome any questions you may have. I truly hope you've enjoyed this lesson and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And be sure to click on the notification bell icon so you won't miss anything. Have fun and I'll see you in the next video.